something that I see a lot in on social media is somebody's posted something, you know, they think that they're doing their marketing. They've got a nice, say on Instagram, they've got a lovely photograph and they're talking about it and it's really quite nice. But then that's it. They don't have a call to action there. And that call to action is so important in your marketing to get people from social media onto your website. Because how are you going to get them to book? By getting them onto your website. So everything in your marketing gears is geared towards getting people to your website. And, you know, there's multiple strategies of blogs and SEO and email marketing and, and social media and all this. But it really boils down to finding people, getting in touch with them, and getting them onto your website to book. Welcome to Short-Term Rental Solutions, a show for hosts and property managers looking to overcome obstacles, maximize revenue, and optimize their short-term rental business by learning from the innovators who are designing the solutions that are shaping our industry. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to this week's episode. Thank you for taking a moment of your time to join us this week. Uh, yeah, it's totally going to be worth your while because today we're going to be working on putting more money in your pocket and helping you to be more successful. And the way in which we're going to be helping you achieve that is by talking about direct bookings and direct booking success. So we actually have as our guest on the show today, Jen Boyles, who is the CEO of a company she's founded named Direct Booking Success. So very aptly named. So Jen, welcome. Thank you for being on the show today. Oh, thank you for having me. It's great. Yeah, awesome. So let's just take the, a couple of minutes here at the beginning of the show to allow you to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background in short-term rentals and what led to direct booking success. And then we're totally going to pick your brain and you're going <laughs> to help us learn how we can be more successful and bring more money into our short-term rental business by direct bookings. Brilliant. Happy to do all of the above. Okay. So I started my journey in this crazy sector of the hospitality industry as an Airbnb host. Okay, so I had a apartment in France, put it on Airbnb in the morning. By the afternoon, I was on the ski slopes and my phone was pinging away with bookings. And I was like, oh, this is interesting. And it was very successful. It was great. Two properties later, it was a five-bed chalet in Austria. We bought it. My then husband and I bought this property thinking, ah, oh, we know everything there is to know about this. We're going to stick it on Airbnb and it's going to be brilliant. Well, the problem was that the, the village in the Alps where this was, that every property there was either a guest house, a B&B, &B, a vacation rental, you know, a hotel, we couldn't stand out on Airbnb and I had a mortgage that I had to pay and I was living a thousand kilometers away and I was just like, what? This is, I thought I knew it all. So it really took me down a peg, definitely. And that's when a previous guest gave me a call and said, hey, can we come and stay? And of course, I'm like, yes. And they goes, but we're going to book direct. And I was like, uh, am I allowed to do that? You know, like what? So it took me a while to get my head around it. And I was like, of course, I want to make this a business. So I want people to come direct. I want to stop relying on the likes of Airbnb because it's great until it just doesn't work anymore. And so I went down this whole direct booking route without realizing that this was a movement, without realizing anything. And it wasn't until our lovely pandemic that I was sitting at home and I realized that there were so many people out there that had done the same sort of thing as I. They'd started on Airbnb and it was working great. And then it sort of stopped working so well and they didn't know what to do. And with my background in marketing and design and how I had worked with my own properties, I thought, well, why don't I start helping people? And so direct booking success was born in the, in the midst of the, the pandemic. And I looked around and I thought, how can I best support those out there? And I started creating websites 
And then I quickly realized that people were getting these websites and not knowing what to do with them. They were just sitting there gathering dust, if you can, online. And so I leaned into the more of the marketing piece. And that's what I do now. So I help people in my direct booking success program with their marketing for direct bookings. But I also have a online annual summit called Direct Booking Success Summit. And it, it happens in October each year. It's online. We had about a thousand people this year and it was huge. It was amazing. And the other thing that I do is a podcast. So helping people and talking to others that are on the same journey to having a more sustainable business of their own and not relying solely on um, the OTAs. Yeah, which is so important. And you're right, the sense that it really, I think that the pandemic was really uh, fueled this whole direct booking movement when all of a sudden Airbnb and other platforms just completely went away for this period of time. And people weren't able, they had only ever counted on bookings coming in through those platforms. So, yeah. But we also had, you know, one of them, we can all know who I'm talking about, went around and canceled all these bookings without any notice or any consultation and gave money back and everything, which, you know, was really a hard pill to swallow for a lot of people. So it was, it was, the pandemic had some silver linings, shall we say. And I think one of them was that eyes were open that if you want this to be a business, if it's, you know, a hobby is fine, you know, a hobby is just fine. But if you're wanting this to be a business and you're wanting to, to look after your property, have people in it when you're not able to use it or have multiple properties that you actually make some money from that there is a way to do it. And that is by taking the bull by the horns and creating your own business. Yeah, absolutely. So, you know, it sounds like you had a paradigm shift uh, as you bought that chalet and realized that you weren't going to just be made in the shade with just using the typical strategy that you had in the past of having your properties on a platform. You know, as you're working with people, what what's kind of the personality type or the paradigm shift? Like what's happening upstairs mentally that you know, as you look at people, you kind of see this is the type of person that like gets it and they're just off to the races and has great success versus, you know, well, the other person, whatever characteristics are, we don't really necessarily need to talk about that, no. but <laughs> what, what are the qualities or the mentality of someone that you see is really setting themselves up for success when they jump into this? I think that this is probably the hardest part for a lot of people and I, I struggle with it as well. And it's the mindset because it's your own business. I think this is not just in our sector. I think it's across anyone who is classed as an entrepreneur or self-employed. It is hard. There's nobody saying you've got to get out of bed today. You know, there's nothing that's your inner side, your inner um, being that has to propel you forward. And I like to say it, and what I would do with my clients is I talk about Im, imperfect action. Don't strive to have it perfect. Strive it to be done and good. You know, good and done is just fine enough. You can always go back and tweak because there's some things that you'll never be happy with, you know, the final product. So just getting it done. And it's the action taking that you need to really get that success. But it is a hard mindset to be in, you know, and there are days that I struggle with it, too. I'm just like, oh, I'd rather be outside doing this or that. But it's like, no, I've got to get this done. And it's knowing your priorities. But also, if you come from a, a world where you've been employed your whole life and then going into working for yourself, that's a huge change. And knowing to stick your stick your CEO hat on firmly on and take the bull by the horns, another that same analogy, but it's it that's what it's about. Direct bookings is really about that control. Yes, you're gonna save some money and you give a better um, guest experience, as far as I'm concerned, with your guests by, by having that communication, that direct communication with them and not having a middle person in the way. But for you and your own business, it's taking that control 
you're the boss. You can decide what your cancellation policy is. You can decide what you're charging and how many nights you want people to stay. You are in charge. And I think that is sometimes a hard thing to get your head around getting into the business. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I heard you say something a minute ago, and I want to go back to it because it really resonated with me. Okay. Um, there's tons of people like when you talk about direct bookings, it's like, okay, well, I need a direct booking website. And you've we've got tons of people who've either invested to have one built from scratch, a custom site, or maybe their property management software has a few templates and a couple clicks later, voila, you've got a website. So there's all these websites out there. And some of them are like ghost towns. No one's coming. Mm -hmm. No bookings have ever come in. That is, I don't know. I don't know what people must think when they're like, wow, I invested in this website and it's literally doing nothing for my business. Mm -hmm. Help us. I mean, obviously you've got some <laughs> tips and actionable advice there. What do people need to do or where can we start to actually yeah. making, having our websites bring us some legitimate value? Well, I think the first thing you need to realize is that having a web website is it's it's not like do you remember that movie with Kevin Costner, Field of Dreams? Like mm -hmm. he if you build it, they will come. That's not applicable anymore. You know, people aren't just gonna stumble. If you're just got this dead space up there online, people aren't gonna stumble across you and go, Oh, here's a place to book. So I think it's knowing that your website is the first step in the process. You need two things for direct bookings. And one is the website. So you need somewhere for people to book online. And the second thing is to telling people about it. That's, that's it. It's, and it sounds overly simple. I was going to say, wow, it's just these one, <laughs> one, two, how, how easy could that's it be? It, though. it really is that easy. The marketing piece is how you're telling people about it. And what I would suggest is, you know, if, if your website is gathering dust, are you telling anybody about it? I'd love to know the answer to that question. Because if you're not telling anybody, then no one's going to know. Now, there's a lot of technical things and more detailed marketing tactics that we can get into. But you basically want people to know that that website exists. So talking about it, telling everyone you know, tell your friends. To your friends and family, do they know what you do? Do they know that you have this website that they can book on? You know, so telling them about it, using social media out there and being social and telling people about your website. Something that I see a lot in on social media is somebody's posted something, you know, they think that they're doing their marketing. They've got a nice, say on Instagram, they've got a lovely photograph and they're talking about it and it's really quite nice but then that's it. They don't have a call to action there. And that call to action is so important in your marketing to get people from social media onto your website. Because how are you going to get them to book? By getting them onto your website. So everything in your marketing gears is geared towards getting people to your website. And, you know, there's multiple strategies of blogs and SEO and email marketing and, and social media and all this. But it really boils down to finding people, getting in touch with them, and getting them onto your website to book. Yep, it really does. Just that easy. Just that <laughs> frustratingly easy, right? So now I'm like feeling, oh, wow, it's so easy. And here I am, like not crushing it. But uh, okay, so, so many of us, right? I myself am an owner and self-manage my own properties. And now I'm beginning to help others with the management of their properties as well. And, but I have limited time and limited resources. So it's easy to think there's so many different things I could be doing. But if I, if I'm time blocking my schedule, I'm a huge fan mm -hmm. of time blocking, by the way, if I've got like two hours on Wednesday that I am focusing on marketing for my properties, and this is a recurring thing. I'm going to spend a chunk of time consistently. Where should where where do you think is the highest ROI for the time that I could be spending on my business? Well, it goes back to your website. Okay. It really does. It goes back to that website. And it's getting people on your website, capturing their details, their email address. 
Okay, from your website, like having a lead yeah. magnet or something. Is that what you're saying? Exactly. A lead magnet. You took the words right out of my mouth, <laughs> a lead magnet. But there are two sort of buckets of guests. If you can picture guests in two buckets, you've got your return guests, which of course are, are cheaper and easier to, to nurture and get them to book again because they've had a great stay that first time. But then you have the other bucket, bucket of um, new guests. And those are the ones that you have to grow all the time so that they sort of feed the other bucket, if that makes sense. Yeah. Okay. So there's sort of two different things to look at. With those that are returning, you know, you've got to be in front of mind. You've got to be emailing them regularly. This does not have to be a huge task. Basically, once a month, send them a newsletter. Hi, how you doing? This is what's going on in the area come back. We'd love to see you. Call to action. Come book on our website. You know, if you're doing blogs and whatnot, that's, you know, getting a bit more into other strategies that you can work on so that you're building content to then use in your newsletter. But the first thing to do is really just to get emailing. Because if you're sitting on a pile of email addresses, again, no one's going to come back. You need to be front of mind reminding them how amazing their experience was and then asking them to, Hey, come and book. And then that second bucket of people, when they get on your website, yes, having something of value like a lead magnet. So a lead magnet basically is something that people can sign up for using their email address and some sort of guide to your local area or something like that. Something that you can think of that if I was new to the website, I don't know these people, I don't know the area, but I, I'm interested, you know, what are the things I can do there? Because people don't book just to stay at your place. They book to come and experience the, the local area and what there is to do. So that is a great way of, of increasing that pool of new guests is by getting their email address. And again, don't stop there actually email them. <laughs> right? Yeah, because you you would, you know, you probably wouldn't laugh, but I've been on countless calls where I say, okay, so are you emailing? No. How many do you have in your email list? Oh, 600, 6,000. You know, they've got these people right there that they could be talking to. And in your email campaigns, once you're nurturing people and you're warming them to the idea of coming back, you should almost know that when you send an email out, you should be guaranteed a booking, at least one. You know, I'm having the thought here, the people who've never done it are the people who probably don't appreciate the true value of it. So I'm going to, uh, let's, let's have an imaginary hypothetical scenario, right? So here's someone who they have email addresses, even if they're new, even if their listing's only been out for 12 months and maybe they've mm -hmm. got 40 email addresses. I don't know. Or best case scenario, you do have hundreds, but you still haven't pulled the trigger. You still haven't sent that first email. So you're finally like, okay, today's the day. I'm going to do it. I'm going to sign up for Active Campaign or MailChimp or whatever it is and send out my first batch of emails. So I'm imagining the person finally takes the time, sends out the first emails. It's nothing amazing. It's pretty, you know, basic, but they provide a little bit of value. They drum up a little of excitement about a coming season or a coming event. They hit the send button, off the emails go. And then within the next, I don't know, let's give it a week. They get one or two bookings. Well, now that however many hours, let's, I don't know, what would you ballpark? Two, three hours maybe to get set up and send that first one. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, depending on where you are in the process, but yeah. Yeah. So, okay. I just spent two hours and I got two bookings. And so think of the return on that two hour investment of your time, depending on what your property is, whether it's a luxury property, mid range or whatever, hopefully you've made a couple hundred, a couple of hundred dollars. If it's a nice property and you're pitching peak season, maybe you've made a couple of thousand dollars. Off yeah. Two hours of your time. I think the people who've actually lived that experience and been like, okay, yep, owning my truth, don't love writing the newsletters. Doesn't light me up, not something I enjoy doing, but I know if I can craft a newsletter and hit send, 
it's going to pay me X. Yeah. A hundred dollars, a couple thousand dollars, totally worth my time. And you'll continue to improve your skills, the efficiency, your fluidity, and whatever that email marketing platform is that you're using. It's going to take you less time. And as that list grows, the return on that time investment is only going to continue to grow, right? Yeah. So that's kind of the mental shift. And once someone has tasted the fruits of that effort and have gotten those bookings, hopefully it's going to be a bit addictive in the sense of like, Ooh, it was this much last time. Can I beat that? Can I, you know, I got one or two bookings last time. Maybe I can get three or four this time. Maybe I can fill up the weekends during my shoulder season, you know, because I'm pitching yeah. a discount or whatever, like challenge yourself, make it a game and see. But also can... don't lose heart if it doesn't happen right away. Good point. Because Good point. if you have been sitting on email addresses or if you're new, um, it's going to take a while for people to see you, to see the value, to get to know you a bit more, and then the bookings will start to come in. It'll be faster with return people because they've been there and they love you than, than new people. You know, it, it will always be harder and more expensive in your time to help get new people in to your world and, and previous guests will be cheaper and easier. but don't do it, you know, okay, I've sent out two emails and I've not had a booking. I'm done. Yeah. Because that defeats the purpose. Marketing, unfortunately, is a long game because you're, you're, you're showing your face, you're warming them up, you're nurturing them. And when they're ready to book, you want to be there. You want to be top of mind. So starting and stopping won't help you. It's almost like you say, time blocking is brilliant. So you could say, okay, once a month, put it in your calendar. I've got two hours there. I'm going to bash myself out a, a newsletter and that's going to go out, but put it in every single month of your calendar so that you've got that time. Nobody makes a meeting. You don't make any appointments. You've got that time to do it. And you will see the return. I can guarantee it. It just might not be from the very beginning. Yep. Yep. That is an excellent point. Thank you for going there. Uh, okay. So now I, I love that you talked about fits or starts because I am, I am going to have a true confessions moment here. I am the type of person that will be like, okay, I'm going to hurry. I'm going to do this and it's going to be amazing. And I get all kinds of energy going and then like crickets. It'll drop yeah. off, you know, and, and it's particularly relevant that we're talking about the email marketing because that is me. I um, am awesome. And then I'm not awesome. And then I'm awesome. And then I'm not awesome. <laughs> yeah. You know, well, when it comes, yeah. When it comes to my properties. And so, you know, but like I mentioned, this concept of getting the flywheel going, the first one or two always take the longest and seem the hardest. But once you get a process and system in place, it definitely becomes less laborious. So, okay. Social media, email. Is there any other kind of outside of the box ways that we can start finding people and talking to people that most yeah. people are talking before, about? Before we go there though, I just want to say something about fits and starts because consistency means more in marketing than anything. Okay. So if you come out of the box and you're like, I'm going to post on social media every single day, and that lasts two weeks, and then you go four months without posting. Why? Why, why have you done this? <laughs> but if you had taken that those two weeks of amazing posts and done them, you know, every few days or two or three times a week, and then you would have had months of, of content out there. And that's the consistency that you need. And it is repetitious. You know, it's not always so much fun that these tasks need to happen. But what I find that with my clients and in my direct booking success program is that they can do it. They can do the social media. They can do the email marketing. You know, yes, I give them a little tips, you know, here and there and talk about tactics and strategies. But what they really need is some handholding. So that when they're like, okay, I've done this, but now I'm not sure what to do next. It's like, okay, here you go. This is it. Or if they're just like, look, I've done it. It's not worked. I'm done. Mm -hmm. It's like, yes, 
but have you given it enough time to look at? And so some accountability, some to get things done, that's really important because once you've said it out loud, you're going to do something or you've said it to another person, chances are you're going to actually do it more than just keeping it in your head. You know, I'm a great person. I love, I love a to-do list, but I catch myself moving a task from the to-do list to the next day's to-do list to the next day's to-do list. And I'm like, what is, what is holding me back? What is, what is, what would get me unstuck with this task? And sometimes it's just talking it out with someone. So it is a great part of being part of a network, a part of a community, a program that you've got that, that we don't feel so alone. This is a very lonely business. And being an entrepreneur or self-employed, your own boss, it is great. But you don't have those water cooler moments with your coworkers. You know, you don't have them. So it's finding that right I don't want to use the right the word tribe, but it's finding that group of people that you can talk to about these things that are going through a similar journey as you are going on. And you can get a bit of that hand holding, a bit of accountability and a pat on the back when things go well as well, because your wins are so important. Even yeah. if it is, I hit send everyone, I hit send, you know, it's like, yes, you've done it. And then the next time it's going to be a little bit easier. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, having that network and the people who are kind of behind you makes a huge difference. I was just having a conversation with someone the other day and they were asking me, you know, a, a question that brought up this conversation where I was telling them about, you know, oh man, I remember that point where I was just getting started and I'm on the phone with someone being like, I don't know if I can do this, you know, kind of breaking down. And, and I, it was so valuable to have those people that could help, you know, speak positivity and success into my ear. And so even if it's, you know, just this direct booking strategy and, and being able to have the courage to keep, you know, persisting in this effort, that's amazing. Or to like push you, hold you accountable. Okay. By next Wednesday, you need to have written that first that first email or you need to have watched enough YouTube videos that you understand how your, you know, email marketing software actually works 100%. Yeah. And sometimes people just need, you know, uh, someone to talk to but also just someone to say, "Hey, I'm here. I've got your back. You know, you're going to do great." And it is, it is really nice to see, but going back to your other question about things, maybe outside of the, outside of the box, you know, like, unfortunately, well, maybe fortunately, marketing isn't rocket science. It's not brain surgery. No one's going to die. You know, this is good, good news, but it's, you know, there's things like guerrilla marketing and crazy things that you can do out there in marketing, but it's not going to move the needle if you don't have the basics in place. And that's where, yes, we can find, you know, you remember threads that came out, was that earlier this year? Yes. You know, is anyone still on it? I don't know. You know, I went on it, had a look, never went back. You know, it's the same with Clubhouse. I went on it, had a look, never went back. So it's these sort of flash in the pan kind of things, shiny object syndrome, which, you know, gets us all at some point. But the thing is, you can't do any of those things until you've got your basics in place. Right. And having that marketing action plan for you that you can d use. So whether it's, you know, doing one blog a month, two emails and, you know, two email or two social posts a week, if that works for you, then that is your strategy. And that's what you have to do every month. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, and you can always start with something that feels super manageable and then add yeah. to that list down yeah. the road. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. A hundred percent. Yeah. So, you know, I appreciate you kind of telling us a little bit about uh, what you do and how you can help people. Sounds like, I mean, just give us that high level one more time. I mean, if people are wanting, they know they need the accountability, they know they need to really put something, a concrete strategy and plan in place. How can you help them with that? 
Well, I have the Direct Booking Success Program, and this is where I help people together. I've got clients in there that have been in the business 30 years, and they're like, I feel embarrassed that my direct booking strategy isn't working so well. You know, we've been really running the business on return guests, and it's been going on really well, but they're starting to die off. And it happens. It's like now, but I need new people in too. So, you know, people that have started, they've got their um, operational side sussed. And now they want that marketing piece. They want to have control of their business, whether they've just started or they've been around forever. How can I get more bookings? How can I drive more traffic to my website? What should I be doing in a smart way? I'm all for working smarter, not harder. And in these days of AI, the tools that are coming out to help us, it's amazing. It really is amazing. So in the program, we've got basically the portal, the learning things are videos and worksheets, and you can do them in your own time. And then a weekly calls with me and the exclusive uh, community of others in the program as well. So it is, it's a wonderful place and I absolutely love it. And then there's also the, the summit that I run once a year. The next one's coming back September, or sorry, October, 2024. Goodness, it seems a long ways away. And it's all online because again, we're lonely. <laughs> we're spread out all over the world. This is a way where you don't have to worry about flying. You don't have to worry about accommodation. You don't have to worry about traveling at all. You can stay in your pajamas as far as I care, but you can take part in that. And then also my direct booking success podcast, where I talk about all of the marketing things, as well as talking to others in the sector who have done the journey or are in the journey. It's wonderful to listen to others and find out what that direct booking success means to them. Yeah. Absolutely. And we'll put links to all of that down in the show notes. So people be sure to check that out. And you also had a resource that you were willing to provide for people, something about helping people 10 something with their website. Yeah. So 10 ways to drive guests to your website instead of Airbnb. Okay. So it's all about getting people to your website. And we've talked about a few of those things today, but this gives you some more. Awesome. So yes, we'll also link that resource in the show notes so people can take advantage of that. Thank you so much, Jen. I appreciate that. Oh, thanks for having me on. Awesome. So I hope you guys have enjoyed today's episode. I love the actionable tips that Jen gave us. Uh, it, It definitely, I think, normalizes the struggles that we all go through and wanting to do this, but not knowing really where to start or, you know, having the courage and the consistency that we need to, to really execute on this. So uh, thank you so much. I appreciate you, Jen. And we hope that you join us next week. We're going to have another guest on here and be working to help you overcome the obstacles that you face in your short-term rental business by having conversations with the innovators who are designing the solutions that are shaping our industry.